I know this much is true. Control four of the podcast. Oh, you are recording. His secret Much mission will keep him most is. occupied, most True. occupied indeed. Back in the box club. Wait, who was that? That voice was familiar. What, what was that? That was uh, Alpha, the same line that I just said a minute ago. I know, but we're on the air now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. I was not expecting that to remain. Uh, what are we doing here? This is normally a That Gets My Goat podcast. What? what? I, this is just a special edition of That Gets My Goat, in which we refer to the aforementioned contest. Oh, when we played uh, Two Truths and a Lie. Right. For Kevin David Anderson's... And Sam Stahl's... New book. Trekkies of the Living... Wait. Night of the Living Trekkies. There you go. Dawn of the Trekcasters. All right. Night of the Living Trekkies. And it's funny. I, I, I guess tons of people have been reviewing the book. It's sold quite a few copies. Well... It sold one copy that I know of. And uh, who knows? Uh, somebody in a review said that they're making Pride and Prejudice and Zombies into a movie. Why can't they make this into a movie? Yeah. have You You saw the trailer, the book trailer for it, right? Does it make me sound like a hole if I say no? Oh, you got to watch it if you haven't seen it yet. It's friggin' good. And you it's so up your alley, too. I can't believe that you didn't click on it the first second. You probably didn't get the uh, link. That's probably the problem, because I know that you click on much worse links and watch much stupider things on the Internet. I mean, it was you that introduced me to the full-on double rainbow guy, so... (laughs) Did we ever use that in the show? I don't think so, but we should. We will. Okay, so basically, we played the game, Big and I, back and forth, and we recorded the entire game, and then... I took that game and edited out our answers and our playing the game so that it was just the questions. Right. And people could send in their responses, and whoever sent in the best responses yeah. won the book. Well, and who it was ended the most up being. Right. Well, we had two books to give away. Okay. And we got two entries. <laughs> okay. Some real stiff competition here. And, and so our winners would be Wendy Cooper. Right. And Brian Lincoln. Is this correct? Right. Cool? So, folks, if you ever uh, hear us do another contest, it might be worth your while to actually enter it. Yeah, give it a shot. You you could be the one that wins because it's not very hard. So uh, now we rejoin the Two Truths and a Lie game already in progress. Don Pardo ain't got nothing on me. So... Thing number one, category number one that we'll each do. So this, this category is family. Now... My family is uh, is a bit unusual. Oh, we're kind of like hillbilly esque, you might say, in my family. So let me uh, tell you the unusual things that, that my family. Are. Number one, I am the seventh of ten children, and I also have five step brothers and sisters. Fifteen. Uh, my oldest nephew is older than my youngest brother. Number three. I have three siblings who all have had children on the exact same day as their own birthday. Three. Have a child that was born on the same day as their birthday. So am I supposed to guess which one is the lie? Yeah, why don't we do that, and then you can edit it out and uh, put it in later or something. I I couldn't understand the math on the second one, so I'm just going to throw that one out and say that the lie was the third one. Wrong. The math on the second one was the one. Nephew would be a child of your brother or sister, and I was saying that I'm a brother and sister that had a child before my last brother was born, which wasn't actually true. It should have been. It was got fairly, 112 brothers and sisters. It was fairly close, actually. It was within a year and a half that they were both born, but it was not true. All right. So my, my family category. Okay, go. Number one, I have two Uncle Georges, two yeah. Uncle Sams, and three Uncle Jims. I have an Uncle Sam, too. I'm a real-life nephew of my Uncle Sam, born on the 4th of July. 
Uh, are we with T? Can we edit? <laughs> Let's just take this whole game out, please. Question uh, number two. Statement number two. All of my grandparents are dead. <laughs> statement number three. I have an aunt. I have an aunt that I am 15 years older than. Wow. Well, that's similar to mine, but much more extreme. Okay, so I'm supposed to guess here then, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to say that the first one, you don't quite have that many uncles with the same name. No, that, that, that one is actually true. Oh, damn. My grandfather married seven or eight women, <laughs> and then he ran out of names and he started to rename them. Oh, he reused them, okay. So which one was the truth? I do have... That grandfather still lives. Oh. Because I knew that the, the aunt... 15 years younger than you think was true. Because you've child spoken. Bride. Yeah, you've spoken of her many times. What's sad is she's not even a child anymore. But <laughs> just compared to my uncle. Right. Okay, the next category is injuries. Injuries. That's right. Everybody has good injury stories. So, number one, I once fell off of an exercise bicycle. This was a stationary. You know what I'm talking about. Vaguely. Not a bike that actually moves. An exercise bicycle. Stationary bicycle. And while falling off, a bolt on the exercise bicycle punched a nickel-sized hole in my thigh, which required stitches. Zink! Boom, two, zink! Number two. I broke the same finger twice within six months. And one of these times... The doctor gave me a cast all the way to my elbow for no better reason than just to punish me. (laughs) Sun-ching! Number three. Once, while helping my dad put up Christmas lights, I fell off the second story. My house was two stories tall. I fell from the second story and landed on our wood pile, receiving only minor scratches. (laughs) Sun-ching! There uh, you go. Okay, I know that the exercise bike story is true because you've told it. Before. I have. My gut says that the second one is the lie, but I'm going to go with the third one just because that's pretty horrible to <laughs> only have minor injury. The third one is the lie, but it did actually happen to my dad. Ah. At the time, we we were preparing to build a deck on the second floor, and so my sister had a big sliding glass door. That opened out into nothing at the time because we hadn't built the deck yet. And my dad actually fell past the door as my sister was sitting there playing with her toys in her room. She's like, <gasps> I just saw daddy go past the window. He was going down. <laughs> but yeah, he landed on the wood pile. This was a freaking rough landing. And yet he came out with just scrapes and scratches, man. Insane. So he punished you by a cast on your arm? Yes. Basically, he was trying to prevent me from just going, okay, because basically what you do when you break your fingers is you just tape your fingers together so that your other fingers serve as the splint for the rest of your fingers so that you can't move it in a bad way or anything by itself because that would hurt it. And so it just kind of keeps it from getting separated out. And that's what happened the second time that I broke my fingers in that same six-month period. The doctor was just like, Oh, see, what I would do was just, you know, tape it up. If it were me, that's what I would do. But since it's you, I know that what you'll do is just go back out and play football with your football team again. And so we're going to have to give you a cast. And so I had a cast all the way to my freaking elbow. And it was all the way up there. And then there's just a little stupid thing that my finger sat on. that was, And it was taped onto this thing. And it was all just for my finger. The cast was completely nothing. It was just to keep me from trying to use it bastard wow (laughs) i had to wear that for three weeks and then i stuck a pen down in there scratching at it and the end of the pen came off inside of my cast and i didn't realize it and when they finally sawed the cast off i had this big nasty infected thing that just he'd basically been driven into my skin steadily it was pretty gross we got a scar from that too all right that can all go in the uh expanded director's cut of this contest. Do we just put that up in in our uh, blog at some point? Yeah, that's what I'd say once the winners are announced. All right, my injuries are, one, I have gotten electrocuted. Two, I have been kicked by a horse. Three, I have gotten my foot torn up in a motorcycle chain. Ooh. (laughs) 
I don't know if you're familiar with this, but uh, the word electrocuted actually means you've died. Whereas if you've just been hit with a jolt of electricity that didn't kill you, you were just merely shocked. Hmm. So I don't know if you know this or not, so that might cause a problem. But I would say that you've never been electrocuted because you're here talking to us live. Listen, buttface! I'm in no mood to deal with an idiot like you! All right, well, I, I don't know how to <laughs> deal with that then. But I'm going to say... But the, what if there is somebody out there that says electrocuted means electrified to death? Uh, you can just say that's not what I meant, sorry. So should I rephrase, or what do you think? I don't think it matters. You can leave that. Okay. As is, and I'll just, we can put the uh, me debunking it <laughs> in the uh, director's cut as well. Monster. <laughs> I wish it was better, too. Okay, so I'm going to guess... I'm going to say the second one. It seems like the most plausible, but for some reason I want to say it. That's right. That's why I put it, because it seems plausible. <laughs> nice, yeah. The, it seemed like, dude, I, farm. yeah, I know you've been on a farm. You surely have to have been close enough to ours to get a good kicking. Interesting. But wait, wait, what? So you're picking that that was a lie? That's, I'm picking that as the lie. Oh, that was the lie, yeah. Yeah. I just figured it seems so plausible that I have to pick it, because that's the one that... Uh, so is your is your foot scarred from your tearing up? It still up? is, yeah. All these years later, Interesting. I think I was four when it happened, and Ooh. I still have the scar. But uh, yeah, when I got the shock, it blew me into the air, and really? I landed on my back, like what ten did you, feet away. What did you touch to get the shock? It was a light socket, and the wiring was bad, and it uh -huh. just blew me up into the air. And wow! I don't know that I lost consciousness, but I just remember being on the ground, and yeah. Have you ever grabbed an electric fence and then gone? Like yeah. they do on TV? Never. Because <laughs> <laughs> they say that when the current hits your hand, you yeah, know, that, that you can't that you let can't go. unclench, and so that's why people get killed. Uh -huh. Okay, so because Kevin's book is about Star Trek, uh -huh. I oh. thought we would have a round where we discuss Star Trek. Oh, so okay. should I go first, or should you go first? My Star Trek, falsities and truities. I have never seen a single frame of video from an episode of Voyager or Enterprise. Now, that's not a big deal because nobody watched Enterprise, but... Or Voyager. Not one second of either of those shows. And how many seasons do they go for? Seven and four. There you go. When the last Star Trek movie came out, I bought a Star Trek shirt, a red shirt, from a cereal box offer. I think it was Frosted Flakes. And I wore it to my work Halloween party. And every year they have everybody stand up there with their costumes and do kind of like a contest. So I was up there and I won the contest from the sheer improbability of me being caught dead in a Star Trek red shirt. Or I have seen every single Star Trek film ever made, including being there opening weekend to see the worst of them all, The Final Frontier. Or is Nemesis the worst of them all? Which do you think? I like Final Frontier much more than Nemesis, yeah. but I think okay. people tend to say the fifth one is the worst. Yeah, it was pretty dang bad, but Nemesis was pretty bad too. I uh, had a hard time staying awake in that one. You didn't even try! Sorry, I'm done. Okay, well, That's I it. know which of the winner was, but... Yeah, we but discussed it, that one really beforehand. You really pounded that into the ground with the uh, winning the contest. Yeah, should I not say that? No, I Is mean, that too just... much, or does it make it seem more likely? Right, it's sheer improbability. That thing is weird, though. They'd have to know that you randomly accost Trekkies on the side of the road and just beat the crap out of them. <laughs> if they listen to the director's cut, now they'll know. Okay. <laughs> so my Star Trek Two Truths and a Lie are, one... I once said, oh, bye, to George, Mr. Sulu, to Kay. No way in hell. Next. Number two. Sir Patrick Stewart and I have the same birthday. No way in hell. Stop it. Next. And number three. I once put my arm around William Shatner. Did you get aroused? I, th I think that would give away whether it's true or not, so... <laughs> No, I could expand your lie some. Uh, just <laughs> guess, please. I guess it would give it away if you said yes. 
Oh, sorry. I'm pretty sure it's Patrick Stewart does not have the same birthday as you. Really? Does he? He does, yes. Oh, I didn't know that. See, I was thinking Harrison Ford, yes, but Patrick Stewart? No way, both. Come on. That's a little too damn unlikely. Yeah, July 13th it was is Patrick Stewart's birthday. To K, then? Right. I have seen him, but I wouldn't he dare. Say, oh, bye. Oh, bye. Oh, bye. <laughs> okay, and we're also going to do the zombie half of this. So here's my two truths and one lie about zombies. Number one. I once played a part in a zombie Christmas story. Now that's ridiculous. I've done it. Number two. Last year, I dressed all three of my children as oozing zombies for Halloween. There's pictures. (laughs) They didn't want to either. I made them. (laughs) Number three. In my entire life, I've only seen one zombie film ever wait wait michael jackson's thriller (laughs) oh does that count as a zombie film no i mean that's just a music video okay two zombie films you know the answer to this one as well Uh, well i know you didn't dress up your children as using zombies my respect for you would skyrocket if you had (laughs) yeah we discussed it unfortunately so you know thank you very much okay zombies for me zombies for you one I once handed in a zombie story as an assignment for an English class. Number two. I own George Romero's zombie trilogy on video cassette, but not DVD. (laughs) Number three. I have never been a zombie for Halloween. I'm a zombie. I'm 16. Hmm. They all sound... Boring. Well, they all sound likely, except for the last one, but last time that helped me get the uh, correct injuries by going with the one that was the most likely. I'm going to say zombie story. No, actually, that's a senior year in high school I handed in. Ah. So which one was it? Uh, I do own George Romero's I own on DVD DVD as well. And what's sad (laughs) is that was originally what I wrote. They all three were true. And then I was just like, oh, shoot, what do I do? That doesn't work. I'm a gay boy, you know what I mean. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Very sad.